Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to the 2D Hack and Slash in GameMaker Studio. This is a pay what you want course. And so in the description, you will find links to either itch.io, where you can donate to support the course, or uh, my Pixlart course on Udemy, so you could buy that, and that would be one way to support the course. But let's get started. So today we're going to be adding in our attack to state and starting our combo system. So we're gonna learn more about scripts today. The last time we used scripts, we had our move and collide script. We're gonna create a new script today and we're gonna call it animation hit frame range. So let's create a new script, animation hit frame range. So basically this script will uh, become true. It will give us a true or a false based on whether or not we are inside of a specific range of uh, frames in our animation. So this one is pretty easy to do. We're going to do, it's going to have arg, it's going to have two arguments. So we'll have a low arg and a high. And we'll say, uh, in our last one, we just put in use argument one and argument two like this. We'll do that same thing for this one for now. So we'll say uh, return image index is greater than or equal to low and image index is less than or equal to, whoops, not, not low and high. We're going to do... Uh, Argument, argument zero and argument one. Okay. So what does return do? So return, our, our other script, our move and collide script didn't have a return. We passed in arguments, but it didn't spit anything back out of it. It just did some stuff, right? It moved us, but it doesn't actually spit anything back out again. So the return uh, keyword here allows us to spit information back out of a script. So you can send some information back into the script and then it will send information back out of the script. So let's say you have an add script, right? And you're trying to add uh, one to five. You would want the script to spit spit back out the the sum of those two numbers which would be six and you would use the return statement to do that so that's similar to what we're doing right here only we have an expression here instead of being like one plus five which is an expression we're saying this statement right here is true and this statement right here is true and so our return statement will either spit out true if both of these expressions are true or it will spit out false if either of these are false because we're using and right here. Okay, so we've got our script set up. Let's start using it. We'll come into our skeleton object and inside of here, we're going to set up a new state. So case, attack two, and we'll say region attack to state. Of course, if you're in GameMaker Studio 1.4, uh, you won't be able to use regions. And region, at least I don't think it can. Break. They they do, some of the updates for GameMaker Studio 2 did make it to 1.4. I don't, I don't know exactly which ones off the top of my head. So, but I don't think you can. So we've got our second state here, and we're gonna have a similar thing where we're gonna say sprite index equals s skeleton attack two this time and image speed equals 0 0.6. Looking good there. And that's all, we've got our attack two state. Now, uh, let's come into our move state and our transition from our move state to our Attack one state uses the uh, left shift key. I'm going to make this left control like that. And the reason is because I don't want it to be shift because then if you press the shift key a bunch, it tries to turn on sticky keys 
uh, which is annoying. We'll be redoing all of our input in a later lesson anyways uh, to clean it up a bit, actually. However, our transition is going to be very similar from our move state to our attack one from uh, in our combo to our attack one state to our attack two state, right? So we're going to copy this code right here. I'm just going to do control C on this little transition code. And I'm going to hide this region. I'm going to come into our uh, attack one. And I'm going to paste that. And then inside of here, uh, we want it to change to the attack two state, obviously, instead of the attack one state like this. However, we don't, we don't want uh, to do it whenever they press control because then they could transition into our attack two state. Um, they could basically cancel their first attack at any time during the animation, which could look a little odd. Uh, and let's just, let let me show you what that looks like. So we'll run the game and see, we can transition immediately into our second attack and it's kind of weird. So we're going to add an additional, uh, requirement here for this if statement. We're going to say, and animation hit frame range. And then you can see we have low and high inside of here. And we're going to do frames two to four. So our low frame will be two and our high frame will be four. I might change this to five later, depending on how this feels. But that gives us a little bit of leeway. So it's like they can press the button and say, okay, between these frames of the animation, it will still complete the combo. So let's check our attack two and we'll want to set the origin to 24 and 48 just like our other ones so the origin should be correct so we'll save that it looks like we have zero one two three four frames oh that's on the attack two how many frames are on attack one zero one two three four okay oops so zero or two to four might work. We'll just have to test it and see. And then the other thing, we can run it again now and make sure we shouldn't be able to switch immediately. We should have to come to a, one of the a frames. However, you guys can see that we get stuck in the attack to state. So we need our animation end to do this. So we'll say if state equals attack to state equals move image index equals zero. Now you guys might be noticing a pattern here. Look at all this. See all this code right here? See how it's all basically the same thing? We can put all of this code, uh, we could put it in a script, that's one option. Um, but we're eventually going to we're eventually going to refactor or rewrite this code so that it so that it can be in the states, uh, and we don't have this coupling with our animation end event. But for now, one thing we can do is just turn this all into one big if statement. So if state equals roll, or state equals attack one, or state equals attack. Two, like that. And we can just get rid of these and it lowers the amount of code that we have inside of here. Let's see how this works. Let's get a feel for how this is working. Okay. Seems to work pretty good. If you press it too fast, it won't combo. If you press it too slow, it also won't combo. But if you get it just right, it'll do the combo. Now, there's a. do you guys see that weird flicker? It's showing the very first frame or one of the other frames of our attack. I think it's the first frame. It's showing one of the frames of our, our, our attack one state before it does the attack two state. Why is that? Well, the explanation is a little bit tricky. 
uh, what's happening is we change the state right here and we set the image index equal to zero but we don't actually run the new state meaning we don't actually change sprite uh, the sprite index um, until the next frame and so we have a single frame where we set our image index equal to zero but we're still the same sprite so it's showing that frame of that that sprite before we reach our next state and change sprites. So this is another place where a, a script can be useful. And I'm gonna do a little trick here. Let us let me show you how to set this up anyways. Um, we, don't want to we don't want to have to set image index equal to zero every time we trans transition states. It would be better if our state could determine that. And because these states are fairly simple, we can actually do that. So let's, let's start by figuring out how to do that. So we'll remove image index equals zero from here, right? And then we'll come into our attack two and we'll set image index equal to zero here. Image index equals zero. That's what we would want, right? Because then uh, it's not gonna set our image index equal to zero until we reach our next state. So let's run the game and see how this works. Uh-oh, we're just stuck. Why is that? Because it's setting our image index equal to zero every single frame. We don't want it to do it every single frame. We only want it to do it the very first frame of our attack to state. So how do we do that? Well, there's a lot of different solutions to this problem, but one that I found that works pretty well is to say if sprite index does not equal let's see not I don't know if you can do that so we might have to use the the exclamation mark so not equal so you can use an exclamation mark to mean not equal to like this so if sprite index is not equal to s skeleton attack two, then we'll set skeleton, our sprite index equal to skeleton attack two, and we'll set our image index equal to zero. Now, why does this work? It's because we set our sprite to the new sprite, so on the next frame of this state, it won't run this code anymore because this will be false. So it's only gonna run image index equals zero one time. It's only gonna run all of this code one time actually, which is perfect because we don't need it to run it multiple times. Uh, we just need it to continue animating the sprite, which it'll do on its own. So now look at that, look at that clean transition. Nice and clean, really, Yeah, that looks good. That looks really good for our combo. So this right here though, this little bit of code, we can move this into a script as well. So we're gonna create a new script. And the reason we'll move it into a script is because we'll be using it in multiple states. And we'll just call this F2, we'll call it state set sprite, okay? And inside of here, we'll pass in some arguments. So we'll do an argument for, so argument zero uh, will be our sprite and argument two or argument one will be our uh, speed. And then argument two will be our we're, we're basically almost always going to want to set it to image index equals zero, but just in case, we'll say you could choose. Like maybe, maybe you want some to start on um, frame one instead of frame zero for what for whatever reason. We'll just make that possible. In our let's zoom out here. Drag this up. Okay. Okay, we can get rid of our move and collide script too. We don't need to. Look at that right now. So now we're gonna copy this code right here. Control C. Well, just do Control X. 
We'll paste it inside of our script, Control V. And we'll tab this back. And then we'll say if sprite index is equal to argument zero is our sprite, right? So argument zero and sprite index is also argument zero, argument zero, that's our sprite that we're passing in. Our speed right here, image speed, so argument one, argument one, and our image index, so argument two, like that. So we put it into a script that we can now use in multiple places. So inside of our attack two state, we'll just say state, uh, I actually don't like this name. I'm going to rename it F2. We'll name it set state sprite. That's a better name, I think. So set state sprite. Then um, what information do we pass into it? Well, uh, S skeleton attack 2. Our speed will be 0 0.6. And the frame we want it to start at is 0. There we go. Now, we can do this exact same thing for our attack one. So we'll copy this and paste it right here in our attack one. And then just make sure you change this to attack one instead of attack two. Perfect. And we can do the same thing for our roll. What do you know? So we move, paste this right up here and just change this to roll. Skeleton, oops, skeleton roll like that. Okay. Now in our move state, we no longer have to set, uh, let's see. We no longer have to set, where do we switch to roll? Right here. We no longer have to set the image index here. We can just set the state, which this looks much cleaner to me. And then we can remove this here. And that is all going to work nicely. Let's run the game, make sure we don't have any errors. There we go. Rolling, all of the states should work. I might actually animate the, I might actually animate some of these states just a bit faster. And obviously these speeds are going to be different for Game Maker Studio 2. But I'm going to do 7 for our roll. I'm going to do 7 for all of them. 0.7. Run the game again. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, that's... I think that's much better. I swear my control button doesn't work sometimes. If you wait, you can just do attack one every time. There. So the players will have to get the timing right because we're not actually buffering input. So that's uh, buffering input is a whole new thing. It's a little bit tricky. So we're not going to be talking about that in this course. But this is a pretty lenient window for um, performing the combo. So most players will be able to figure it out and get the combo to work. So there you go. We've done attack two. Uh, we've got more planned for the next lesson. Thank you guys so much for watching this one. I really appreciate your support. And I will see you guys later.